Oh, I have to restart my... Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, February 17, 2015 meeting of the Lake Forest City Council. Could I ask the clerk to call the roll, please? Certainly. Honorable Mayor Schoenheider. Here. Alderman Waldeck. Here. Alderman Beidler. Here. Alderman Moore. Here. Alderman Pandeleon. Here. Alderman Tack is absent. Alderman Reisenberg is absent. Alderman Edelman is absent. Alderman Moreno. Here. Mr. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you very much, Biddy. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Quacking the phone off here before that makes a mess. Good evening. First item on the agenda is comments by city officers, uh, comments by mayor being the first. I have one uh, board and commission appointment. Uh, Mark Pasquese has agreed to serve from the fourth ward on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I would like to have a motion to approve his appointment, please. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, Mark is unanimously approved. <coughs> Congratulations. Uh, and I want to recognize William Manzer, who's in the audience tonight, who is joining us to uh, progress on his, uh, I think, a Boy Scout Merit Badge, maybe. So welcome. It, uh, it isn't always this crazy. Sometimes it's worse. So we're happy to have you here. Uh, and that is all for my report this evening. Next item on the agenda, comments by City Manager Bob Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. In front of you is a copy of a report on the uh, winter snow and salting operations to date. And uh, as you can see, January was an interesting month for us, particularly uh, that big storm that we had a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately for our overtime budget, the storm occurred on started Saturday and worked through Sunday. Uh, but uh, we're still uh, holding our own, both from a budget standpoint as well as our salt supply. We just hope that the rest of February and into March are a little calmer. Uh, and then whenever we really get down, we just thank God we're not Boston. Yeah, uh, that's right. But uh, Mike Thomas is here if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, I have no further report this evening. Great. Any questions for Michael? He survived. Next item on the agenda, comments by council members, uh, PPL committee, consideration of a recommendation from the Property and Public Lands Committee in support of entering into a contract with Jacob and Hefner Associates for professional services related to the environmental cleanup of the city's former municipal services site. And we'll have a motion later uh, presented by Kathy Cerniak, Director of Community Development. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, I did want to take just a few minutes uh, to give you an overall update on the progress of work uh, toward the redevelopment of the Laurel and Western Avenue site. <clears throat> work in progress. Uh, we are uh, chipping away uh, at the cleanup of the overall property. Uh, plans are being refined by focused development and the public review process is underway. A little bit more about each of those. Um, Mr. Mayor, as you mentioned tonight on your agenda, we are requesting authorization from the city council uh, to allow the city manager to enter into a contract for owner's represent representative services from Jacob and Hefner. Uh, Ron Gregoric, who is our primary contact from Jacob and Hefner, is in the audience tonight. Uh, certainly isn't prepared to um, give you an overview or a timeline. He's just really working to get up to speed, uh, reviewing all the previous documentation uh, going back to about 1997 that we have on environmental issues, various tanks that have been pulled, various studies that have been done. Uh, we delivered a large box to him, even in advance of your approval tonight, in anticipation of your approval. Um, so if you choose to do that at, at the end of um, my comments, it would be appropriate to 
uh, approve a motion authorizing the city manager to, to enter into that contract. It is in an amount not to exceed $98,000. We do know that as we go through the process, we will be back before you to request uh, additional monies uh, to uh, support cleanup of the site. Uh, the cleanup of the property, as you know, is reimbursable through the TIF district that was recently approved by the city council. Um, <coughs> we did go through a request for qualifications and an interview process uh, in order to select an owner's representative. Uh, after discussion by the Property and Public Lands Committee, they really uh, urged, directed uh, city staff to engage an owner's representative. We don't have anyone on city staff that is an expert in the area of environmental cleanup. Uh, we did issue an RFQ. Uh, we had, I believe, eight responses, seven or eight responses. Um, we chose to interview five. Um, one of those dropped out due to scheduling conflicts, uh, interviewed four. The interview team included Bob Kiley, city manager, Michael Thomas, director of public works, Dan Martin, superintendent of public works, Paul Peterson, code enforcement officer, and I was on the team as well. Um, after those interviews, we did unanimously agree to recommend to you uh, that we engage Jacob and Hefner. Um, references uh, were checked, and um, they, they really were glowing references. So we look forward to working with them uh, and anticipate your approval. Um, while that has been going on, we did continue to work on some cleanup of the property. As you know, Midwest Environmental has done work for us on that site for a number of years now. Uh, we do have an open contract with them. They have completed asbestos sampling. Uh, they will be on the site this Thursday uh, to do another walkthrough with some contractors. We have actually um, informed Mr. Gregoric of that activity, so he is now coordinating with us and um, he doesn't know it, but he will be taking over and, and working directly with Midwest Environmental to get city staff out of the middle. Um, our code enforcement officer, Paul Peterson, will be the direct contact working closely with Mr. Gregoric on the project. Um, coming shortly, we will be talking about fencing the property, again, looking to our owner's rep for advice. Uh, we'd like to fence it. Uh, to clearly signal that work is underway uh, for safety and security, um, and we'll do that at, at the appropriate time. Uh, once the asbestos is taken care of and we have a clean bill there, we will proceed with demolition of the buildings. Um, I will review a map in just a moment. Um, hopefully, in the coming months, the snow that's been located there will melt. Um, Michael Thomas had a great picture of uh, this. If you haven't been out there, there is quite a bit of snow on the site. Um, hopefully the salt uh, is being used up. Um, so that will clear up that site. The gravel in that large area that's now covered with snow will actually be relocated and recycled and reused by our public works department. They will be taking that out to the compost center. So that work will, continue, will get underway uh, once the snow melts, um, and then we'll work with our owner's representative for, uh, to complete the soil remediation and ultimately get certification that the site is clean. Just a quick overview. Um, the buildings that remain are outlined in yellow. Um, so we have uh, the small house, the administration building with the attached fleet garage, sanitation garage, um, some storage garages and the salt bay. Those buildings all need to come down. The area where the gravel will be removed will be generally in this location. We did have a temporary lease um, with the owners of the building just to the south. And um, that lease has either been terminated or uh, will be terminated very shortly. Um, generally, we, we believe that based on previous studies that the petroleum uh, Contamination is located generally in the northwest corner of the site, um, and, and that work will proceed as directed by our owner's representative. <clears throat> in December, focused development was before the plan commission received initial public input. In response to that, they have made some refinements to the plans. They have uh, had some technical studies completed. Uh, we know that traffic is a significant issue. Uh, prior to uh, their 
consultant completing the traffic study, we did uh, bring in our city engineer, other engineering staff, our police representatives from our police department to talk through the areas that should really be focused on, um, not just at the Laurel Avenue site, but also expanding beyond that a little bit. Um, we have, over the last couple weeks, gotten a number of materials in for review, uh, received some updated plans just today. Uh, we are awaiting the, the formal applications for both the Building Review Board and Plan Commission, uh, the standard application fees. Uh, but knowing those are coming, we have scheduled this for Building Review Board, an introduction to the Building Review Board on March 4th. Um, they'll look at the building architecture, massing, exterior materials. They'll um, see some initial uh, plans for conceptual landscaping. The Plan Commission, again, they had an introduction in December. We will bring this before them so they can open their public hearing on March 11th. Uh, the, the public notice for both of those meetings uh, will go out tomorrow. It'll be a single notice noting that both of those meetings are occurring. Uh, the initial landscape plan, just to remind everyone, this was actually the landscape plan that was part of the initial proposal. Um, the Western Avenue is along the east side of the site, Franklin Place, Laurel Avenue. Toward the west side is the single family. Two condominium buildings are proposed and a three-story apartment building and a four-story apartment building with a clubhouse uh, management support located in this area. Um, there is a north-south street connection uh, and at least in the initial plan, the traffic uh, for the underground garage, which will support this development, um, was directed off of this road. In response to comments heard in December, um, a revised site plan, again, just received today and, and certainly is still undergoing modification. Uh, entrance to the underground garage, there's an opportunity to enter that now directly off of Western Avenue. There still is an opportunity to enter that off of uh, the new road, but that will help to pull some traffic away. Uh, there's been some additional green space that's been offered here. Um, rather than have a service drive that approaches the clubhouse, at least in this plan, there's a proposal that um, the original Franklin Park, which was originally in this location, really gets elongated and extended in this area, uh, providing for a, um, a nice pedestrian walkway move toward the central business district. So again, plans are underway. Um, just a quick look at a couple elevations as they continue to evolve. Uh, again, these plans were just received today. These are the single family homes. There's some work being done um, to assure that the streetscape along that new, straight, new street um, doesn't just present uh, the rear of the homes or the side of the home, so they're doing some work in really articulating the portions of the home that will front that new street, looking at perhaps some, um, providing some distinguishing features be between the different uh, single family homes and duplexes. Uh, this is a quick look at the four story apartment building, which is lo located closest to the corner of Laurel and Western Avenue. Uh, talking through some of the ex exterior materials, um, understanding uh, what refinements have been made since the initial plans, uh, looking at some of the um, areas where um, entrance elements have been added. Uh, so they're continuing to look at refinements to those. Um, <clears throat> one of the condominium buildings, uh, two-story condominium building, again, just an initial image. So just to give you a sense of the progress that's being made, Looking ahead, uh, we would anticipate that recommendations from both the Building Review Board and Plan Commission uh, would be occurring in the next couple months. Uh, those would, of course, be forwarded to the City Council. Uh, concurrent with that, there will be ongoing coordination between Focus Development and Jacob and Hefner. Um, in fact, uh, I think we're working on uh, a meeting scheduled for next week where we will bring in representatives from Jacob and Hefner to talk with uh, FOCUS's environmental team. Uh, at the same time, we'll be talking about a plan for construction activity once FOCUS gets going on the site. We have heard from neighboring property owners concerns about traffic, about construction vehicles on Laurel Avenue on Franklin, staging of materials, noise, dust, work hours. So as we would with any development, we'll, we'll work through that before the site work begins. Um, and then once the site work is ready, uh, foundations are dug, which 
with an underground garage, there, there will be significant excavation. Um, then obviously the vertical construction would begin. Um, along with, with this, uh, we do expect to take possession of the single family home in the next couple weeks. Uh, that is one of the buildings that will be demolished. Um, and I'm sure this doesn't cover everything, but just to give you a sense of working uh, toward redevelopment on, on various fronts. So I would be happy to answer any questions, and uh, if you determine it's appropriate, uh, then a motion authorizing the city manager to approve a contract with Jacob and Hefner to serve as owner's representatives would be appropriate. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Any questions? I George? Do, I do have a question, um, and I think I should know this, so I'm a little embarrassed. When are we actually planning to, will this be staged in terms of people moving in, or is it, is it going to be everybody goes into all the different kinds of units at the same time, or what, what's our... When, when will we have happy residents in that? Oh, boy. Um, Focus has talked about staging the construction, okay. and some of that is, go is going to depend on um, just the level of interest. And, and I will say, city staff has received a number of calls um, on a daily, almost on a daily basis, and we are directing those people to Focus. Uh, we do believe they're, they're going to start with construction toward Western Avenue, and move to the west but um i think all of that is subject to change right now as far as when people are going to move in I, I, i'm not comfortable putting a, a date out there yet but um, sure. I, mean. <laughs> um I, I think it's possible i think we'll see construction activity on the site next fall um fall of 15. fall of 15 there will be depending on what kind of winter we have uh winter of 15 and 16 that will depend but um Perhaps fall of 16. Don't hold me to that. No, I, 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 but I was, you know, and it's a question we get asked, so it's nice. To and we'll be, we'll be able to answer that, I think, more definitely as we come before you with recommendations from the Building Review Board and Plan Commission. Uh, just, just to clarify, this, this expenditure will be TIF eligible? Yes, it will. So it would be covered by the proceeds <clears throat> of the bonds? So we'll be reimbursed through the bond issue. Okay. I had two questions. That was one of them. The, the second one, um, it, it's a bit of a sensitive one, I guess. We've The city council has met with Focus and Part and in total at different times and shown encouragement to the plan. And um, now it's going to the boards and commissions. Uh, and I would... How are how are you going to handle the potential of the of the of focus group feeling as if they already have the support they need? Because this kind of happened a little bit before, um, in my opinion. But I think I, I can't see doing it any differently the way we did it because we had to pick someone to give the land to and look at the plan. But I'm I'm a bit concerned um, that they have to. They're starting from the beginning and they've already seen the finish line. And how how is that handled so that we don't set expectations incorrectly and and allow the process to be complete. If I might uh, jump in first, and then I'll let Kathy uh, follow. <laughs> Under the purchase contract, the uh, focus group has no entitlement to any approvals. They are subject to all of the same processes that any other developer would have to go through. And the city council reserves, as well as its subsidiary bodies, reserve all of their prerogatives as they would in any other zoning condition. Um, Certainly, there has been some uh, previews of what they were thinking about, which led to their selection, but that preview does not dictate an outcome. That outcome is ultimately in the hands of the council, and you will be able to make that determination as you deem is best for the city and, uh, and its residents. So uh, I don't know if Kathy wants to talk in any greater particularity about it, but that's how it's been handled under the contract, and we have no obligation whatever to approve anything that they sub uh, submit uh, other than pursuant to the standards in our codes. I, my questions are directed at uh, not undermining boards and commissions by the city council. So it, obviously, I'm sure that we have a final say, but but we're going to get recommendations 
and and Just they too reserve the process. Are, are have have reserved to them the same prerogatives that they ordinarily would with any other zoning application to make their recommendations. And they know this up front, and they're they should anyway, right? Okay. Yes. And I will just comment. We have spent at the staff level a lot of time with focus, and we uh, started as we do with any developer. We try and identify the issues that are likely to come up, um, and we identify traffic and building height and density and um, loss of Franklin Park and loss of the berm. Focus has already heard many of those comments at the December Plan Commission meeting, um, and as I mentioned, uh, there have been some changes to the site plan already. Um, I, I mentioned some additional open space. One thing I didn't mention is, um, although the berm is lost, because that berm really um, is in part supported by the sanitation garage, and it, it was built to really separate an industrial site from a residential area, but Focus did hear that um, the streetscape along Franklin Place was important to some of those residents. And as a result, they had their arborist, we had our arborist go out and look at the hackberry trees that are on the south side of Franklin Place. And the decision was made that rather than widening Franklin and adding parking there, that in deference to, to the residents, that it may make sense to leave those hackberry trees there. And actually this plan shows that. So um, we certainly have identified issues. I, I think that uh, there will be a considerable amount of public testimony at, at the plan commission meeting and probably at the building review board as well. So we would just um, expect those bodies to have the normal discussion and um, I think focus is well aware that those discussions will occur. Um, Marina? Um, on the Jacob and Hefner uh, <clears throat> uh, amount uh, that's estimated here, not to exceed, but there may be some changes. Uh, the amount seems so specific to me. How was it arrived at? We asked Jacob and Hefner for a formal proposal. Uh, this number is in line with the estimates that we received from the other companies. It actually is the lowest one we received, but they were all within twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And it is, um, we realize that we're bringing it to you as a not to exceed amount, but Jacob and Hefner has said that as they uh, approach expenditure of 75% of that amount, we will be sitting down talking through uh, what services are still needed, um, and, and importantly, one of Jacob and Hefner's roles will be to, to bid out the cleanup of the site. So you will also see those contracts for contractors who are going to, going to actually do the work. Jacob and Hefner is really the city's advisor, will be directing us and guiding us on decisions that need to be made, again, because we don't have that expertise on staff. Thank you. So it was, it was, I guess, a, a, a timing, uh, a time function that they estimated the number of hours that they would need to commit and built it up. At this point, in. yes. And, and we did, um, we also talked about a, a very tight timeline. Ideally, we would like to have cleanup of the site um, and all the necessary certifications in our hands by the end of July. We all realize that that's a very aggressive timeline. So it, it's likely there may be some extension there. Got it. Thank you. Michelle, I was impressed. We, we got in our packets, as you know, the whole, the whole proposal was pretty thorough. Um, I went through it because it was, you know, I've been, this is not my area of expertise. I can't find it now, but um, I know there were hourly notations of, uh, you know, the different, you know, how much people get per hour and so on. And I really appreciate that kind of detail because it's important. You know, I mean, I, 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 was, I was interested in the same thing, and it felt pretty well documented to me, not necessarily exactly where all that 98 might go, but you got a sense, it's a pretty big scope of work to kind of get this all figured out, and to have somebody with this kind of expertise is very reassuring to me. Any other questions? If not, I look for a motion to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Jacob and Hefner Associates for an amount not to exceed $98,000 for professional services as a city's owner representative for the cleanup of the former municipal services site. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Pandelino? <coughs> Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. Five yay, zero nay, motion carries. Thank you, Betty, but very much. I would also echo, echo uh, Alderman Beidler's comments that um, I, I think 
when the concept of an owner's rep was discussed with the PPL and the council, it made a great deal of sense. And I think it's going to be obviously that it's TIF eligible helps, but it makes a great deal of sense. And it's a it's the right thing for us to do since we don't have that expertise in house. So. Next item on the agenda, opportunity for citizens to address the city council on non-agenda items. Anyone care to address the council this evening? Yes, come forward, sir. State your name and your address, please. At, uh, at the microphone, please. Dan Seabald, 560 Ivy Court in Ward 1. Um, <clears throat> what's that? Okay. What I wanted to do today was um, inform you about a letter that I had sent to the City of Lake Forest in January. And the purpose of that letter was just to bring to your attention that uh, Highway 53 and Highway 120 extension into Lake County is coming up soon. And that's a very important decision for Lake County. And um, I think over the course of about three months now, the county and the Chicago Metropolitan Area Planning Committee or whoever is in charge of that is putting together a case for extending Highway 53 into Lake County. Now this was attempted about 20 years ago and the city of Lake Forest at that time is reported to have supported the extension into Lake County. And uh, I don't know if we, that uh, letter or document has been unearthed or not, but it may be in the archives, I'm not sure. Um, but what I would like is for the city of Lake Forest to reconsider that support and make a, another statement some po point in the next few months, either supporting or opposing it. And in my opinion, opposing is uh, the preferred option. Um, and so that you would have opportunity in the coming months to present the topic to your constituents and get feedback. Um, and I'm sure the county at some point is going to approach the city because one of the ideas is a county gas tax. And if that's the case, then I'm sure Lake <coughs> Forest will have some input on the matter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else care to address the council this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, next item, uh, items for omnibus vote consideration. There are five this evening. I'll read all of them. If any members of the council wishes to take them separately, we can do so. Item number one, approval of the February 2, 2015 City Council meeting minutes. Number two, consideration of recommendations from the Zoning Board of Appeals in support of ordinances granting zoning variances, first reading if desired by the City Council, final approval. Number three, consideration of an ordinance approving a recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission, first reading if desired by the City Council, final approval. Number four, consideration of an amended and restated intergovernmental agreement between the city and the village of Matawa. And item number five, consideration of a resolution regarding the expiration of an intergovernmental agreement and approval of a wind down agreement with Lake Forest School District 67. Uh, Alderman really, Waldeck. Yeah, could we just briefly break out um, item number four? I just mm -hmm. have a quick question slash comment. Yep. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm a, a little concerned um, with the Meta proposed Matawa agreement um, regarding the parking at the at the beach, and, and I, I certainly understand um, the, the thought behind this idea and um, that it may, at the end of the day, be mostly a symbolic gesture, um, but it, 50 spaces um, and the North Beach, which is sort of premium spaces. We don't have a, a ton of spaces. Um, and just to offer that on a yearly basis, starting now, um, is, is there any review is there uh, of this process? Is it something that we, we could try for a year and, and, and see how it goes? And could we limit the parking to the, to the upper South Beach area? I, I, I might be, I, I, just wonder if we could tweak it a little. Yeah, I think based on your comments, Alderman, uh, did chat with, uh, actually Sally Swarthout is here in the audience and uh, uh, Chief Held, and uh, <coughs> yes, there's a way because they would be separate passes that we could look at doing that uh, differently. Um, 
and identify a location in which they would be eligible to park. And I think also from their standpoint, uh, we have no idea how many of them will be used per se. And I think they will be as interested as we are to sort of revisit this after a year and see what's working, what's not working. Is there a, it, it, would it be worth considering, um, you know, having having a special rate that's not the resident rate, which I take it as the price of our vehicle sticker, and not the non-resident rate, which is extremely high? Um, is there something in between those those two or? Well, um, I mean, the council certainly can set any rates it wants to. I think because we weren't sure where this was going long term, we didn't want to get into having multiple rates. I will tell you, finance department would prefer not to have too many uh, different rates, only from an administration standpoint. But you know, clearly we could put it at anything. I think that sense was based on the other terms of the agreement to do it as simple as possible, limit the number, and then let's evaluate where it is after a year. And, and, we and, can see. and if it doesn't work after a year, just eliminate it? Uh, we, we'd be bringing it back to the council, and they would be as well. Okay. Hey, I just yeah. <clears throat> heard something. I'd just like clarification. You said 50 spaces, and I heard 50 passes. If it's 50 spaces. No, it's permits. Permits. Yeah. OK. So it may only be one space. It's not. It, correct. There's not a Matawa parking area. No. OK. No. Because I, I didn't find that, and she said spaces, yeah. and I was like, whoa, it's a different. If 50 permits are per, are purchased and they all show up on the same day, and that's probably probably not very likely. Uh, but if that were to happen, uh, th that's a fair amount of sure. a fair amount of parking. And, and we can apprise you of how many we actually sell because we're not sure we're going to even sell that many. But you never know. Right. And I by think. North Beach, do you mean the at the beach level? No, it would be the South Beach upper deck. Oh, because I thought when I, what I saw in the agreement was North Beach parking permits. Well, uh, we call the, them that uh, because if you want to park on the South um, lower level, you have to get a separate pass for that. And so, but the average resident, when you have your vehicle sticker, that is considered a North Beach permit. So does this, um, um, Bob, does the language in this have to be modified to specify that we're gonna look at this, that it's a, for, for now, we're gonna start with just year, with 2015 and then take a look at it again next year? Do we need to be clear with them that that's the language? It doesn't seem like that's quite what we have right now in the language. No, I guess I'd ask Victor. It, because it now talks about um, uh, the purchase of any parking permits would be effective May 1 of each year purchased beginning in 2015. So. Certainly, if, if the council wishes to change the rates, that's something that is independent of this agreement but will apply to this agreement. If the city okay. determines that the agreement is not functioning in the way that it wants to, it would reopen it with Matawa or terminate the agreement. Okay. And they would expect that. I and think we'd better. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think that the <coughs> expectation would be that everyone that we would understood this to be a first round experiment and would revisit it. Okay. I think to Alderman Waldeck's comments, if we have 50 residents of Matawa at the beach at one time, it's probably not a good experiment. Yeah. So. Right. No, I, I feel much more comfortable knowing that it's something that we can, we can take a look at and. Yep and see how it's going. Thank can, you. Can I, can I ask a, maybe a little bit of a pointed question here? Why are we doing this? I mean, it, it's <coughs> a potentially significant inconvenience for us. And Right. I think if you take a look, it, it's part of the overall agreement in the intergovernmental agreement with Matawa and the city and the, and the sharing. And some of this has to do with their original agreement related to the Tollway Oasis uh, revenue sharing, but also I think looking at opportunities that for both of us, whether it's the BMW tournament, whether it's the um, uh, potential for extending a bike path along the north side of, of Route 60 to, if you will, build relationships and do some things in a more collaborative way than we have in the past. There might be some other uh, service sharing agreements that we've looked at in terms of inspectional services and whatnot. So it's just sort of part of an overall package. Uh, and I think the feeling was that this really is not going to, at the end of the day, be that big of a deal because 
while I respect the potential, the likelihood of 50 uh, non-residents coming to the same day is probably slim. And so I think it was a feeling of, let's see if this works. If it doesn't, we'll come back and revisit that. Is, they, is this something that, that Matawa requested? Because This of... has actually been under discussion for, I'm going to say, seven to ten years. Uh, you know, that uh, uh, the, uh, the question came up, uh, I don't remember how many mayors ago, uh, when it first came up. And it was one that we've looked at and really have said, under what conditions would we do it? And I think it really was brought to a head uh, two years ago in 13 when there was um, a lot of collaboration over the BMW tournament and what are they getting for their, you know, the impact that the tournament is having on their community and those kinds of things. So I think it really sort of was brought to a head then. Okay, thank you. And I would tell Alderman as well to follow up on Bob's comment. It, the village, even though you could make a case that it really wasn't our issue that you know there was 125,000 people during a week at the BMW and it was the WGA and and Conway Farms that was the issue it was our issue as well and uh, Matawa was very helpful mm -hmm. uh, it, numerous times in helping us deal with traffic and a variety of different things and I, I think it just was simply an issue of goodwill okay any other comments if not I'd ask for a motion to approve the omnibus please so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Waldeck? Aye. Alderman Beidler? Aye. Alderman Moore? Aye. Alderman Pandeleon? Aye. Alderman Moreno? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, you're going to be called upon to vote on this tonight because of the waiver of uh, first readings and the absence of uh, several of our members. Alderman Sch or <laughs> Mayor Schoenheider? Aye. <laughs> Six yay, zero nay, motion carries. Thank you very much. Boy, that was fun. <laughs> next item on the practice, huh? I'm out of practice for sure. Uh, next item on the agenda, new business, consideration of adoption of a resolution approving an updated real estate rider, again presented by Kathy Cerniak, Director of Community Development. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. On a quarterly basis, city staff meets with local realtors right here in the council chambers. Um, and uh, at one of our last meetings, uh, as we often do, we, we asked uh, for their ideas of, of what the city could do to assist them. And we heard from several, several of them that the real estate rider, which was originally adopted in 1998, should be revisited. Um, so we did pull that out. Uh, there isn't a, a lot of documentation uh, from 1998 on why it was adopted, but at that time, um, I believe it was adopted shortly before or just about the time the city uh, established a preservation commission. There were a significant amount of teardowns, and the intent of, of the council was to communicate was to educate potential buyers, to set realistic expectations, um, and, and just encourage them to, to be aware. Um, however, in rereading that rider, I think the, the staff agreed with the realtors that it, it sounded a bit harsh. And so we did spend some time rewriting it. Um, uh, Susan Banks actually uh, provided a lot of very helpful input. We did provide a draft to the local real estate offices, asked them for comments, incorporated those, um, and in the end, uh, got some good feedback from them on the revised real estate writer. Again, the intent is um, to provide information, to set realistic expectations, to encourage people to um, be thoughtful in selecting architects and contractors, uh, to encourage them to see staff as an ally as they work through the process. Um, so if you choose to adopt an updated real estate rider, there is a resolution uh, to uh, make that adoption. Uh, I believe it's on page 93 of your packet. Um, and if you choose not to <coughs> adopt an updated rider, um, uh, you would either leave the existing rider in place or uh, take some action, and I would look to the city attorney, um, that would uh, eliminate or void that 1998 rider. But from the staff perspective, we do um, 
hear from potential buyers that, that they have seen this. Maybe not all of them see this, but if even a few see this and as a result make a contact early and ask questions, at least from the staff perspective, we, we believe it's helpful and, and not hurtful. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Kathy, yes. when, when in the process is it typically given to the buyer, if, if at all? I'm, I'm just curious. This is distributed to the real estate offices. We do hear from several real estate agents that they do share this information at the time of sale or when someone's looking at property. Uh, there really is no enforcement mechanism. It, it's really a full <coughs> disclosure if the... Uh, real estate offices are aware of this, they should be disclosing it to potential buyers. Uh, we will also make this available on our website. I don't believe the 1998 version was ever available, so we can certainly call it out in that way again, uh, just for information. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, if I could, let me just, because I was here in 1998, um, put a sharper point on. One of the problems at that time was the fact that individuals were putting contracts down on homes or lots. They were engaging architects, designing their homes, in some cases tearing down homes, and then they would come before a respective board or commission and say, well, I was told by so-and-so that I could do this. And I think the city council um, was getting tired, if you will, of being put in a difficult spot of either overriding a board or commission or um, <coughs> making a potential new resident unhappy. And so really the whole initial intent was to raise awareness when a person came in, not that they couldn't tear a house down, not that they couldn't do things, but it really would encourage them to come meet with Kathy and her staff before they got too far into the process and became married to this plan that quite frankly didn't fit into the neighborhood, didn't meet our codes, whatever the case might be. So that was sort of the whole intent because, and I believe it's the same case now, is by the city council adopting this resolution and us making it available to the real estate offices, they have a obligation to disclose to their potential tenants, or tenants, their potential clients, that uh, this exists and can walk them through it. So it's really as much an educational piece to avoid conflict month or two down the road before one of our boards and commissions and ultimately the city council than anything else. Kathy, are these used pretty commonly in other communities? I mean, do other communities on the North Shore have these uh, real estate writer sometimes? I can't answer that. I, I can tell you that we often get questions from other communities, staff in other communities or elected or appointed officials. So we have certainly distributed copies of this. If we go to seminars, we often talk about it, but I, I don't know if anyone has implemented it. I'd just like to, when we, when we present this to the realtors <clears throat> and if they choose not to show it to their buyers and the buyer then gets upset with, a, I was on HPC, 10, 12 years ago, and, and they, they get quite angry that they can't double the size of their home on an historic lot in a historic part of town. <clears throat> I don't remember pointing to this document that they should have seen, which would have been very helpful in these some of these irate meetings, um, because people got quite angry. They were going to double their home, and, and they, they weren't able to. Uh, uh, is that, I don't ever remember using this document as any sort of recourse to our position at HPC. Um, where, where was it and was it used? Was it done without in not the open meeting or? Because it does relieve us of quite a bit of, of bad news. We, we, we don't usually put it out in, in a public meeting, but when we have pre-application conferences with petitioners, um, with new home buyers or potential home buyers, we, we have we do frequently share the real estate rider, or we at least ask the question, have you seen that? And most of them say that they have seen it. Um, but those are probably the ones who come in for the pre-application conferences. But, but you're correct. We don't often at public meetings wave this and, and say no, it you would should be, have seen it. It would be it. helpful, but rude at the same time. You know, <laughs> and, you know, but, uh, um, Didn't you see this? Okay, I, th I think it's a fabulous idea to inform any you know, anybody dealing with the municipality of the of expectations i think the more truth and transparency that's out there the better that the public responds and understands even if they choose not to live here because of it but i think it's a fantastic fantastic move and i would like to point out that alderman edelman feels exactly the opposite <laughs>
He's not here. But so. he's not here. I just yeah. think it's a much better document than the 1998 document. It just, um, in terms of its its tone and its its presentation, um, it I think it delivers the message that we want to deliver in a, um, a much better way. Are we being asked to approve this as written tonight? Or with changes? I had one editorial comment. I mean, I do think it's a much more user-friendly document. And I, I also was around in 1998 when it was created. And we had a serious problem. And I think <clears throat> some of the language and the tone of the prior um, document reflected some of the frustrations at the staff and council and board and commission level uh, because people would literally, they would have already, they would before they closed on their houses sometimes, they would have spent thousands of dollars on architectural fees, using an architect from out of town who didn't know what the rules were and hadn't asked. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, and you know, people were threatening litigation and so forth. So it was, it was, it needed, and I think part of the reason the tone was so harsh is because there was a sort of a feeling like we needed to put up a skull and crossbones or something to warn people. Um, but I, I, the only comment I have editorially is at the very, in the, at the very end um, of the main text of it, uh, the last sentence, it just says, all potential buyers and new homeowners are encouraged to consult with city staff early and so forth. Um, it doesn't really say what they're supposed to consult with them about. So I just thought maybe a little editorial clarification there might be helpful. Um, you know, generically, if they're, if they're not planning to do anything immediately, then Obviously, they don't need to, but especially in a case where they're planning on making significant changes to the site or to the, you know, the house or whatever. But it does say to consult early in the planning process for new construction and alterations to existing residences. I so you're saying regarding I, bulk I just, and design I, I didn't, and it style? Didn't, it, didn't, and it didn't come. It didn't like <clears throat> come out to me as a as as I read it with the eye of a consumer, like, well, why? I mean, it's just a, it's kind of a soft ending. Yeah. So that's just an editorial comment. Okay. But so we could try and. Without being, go back to the old harsh language, but I think just clarifying kind of what it is that they should be specifically yeah. coming forth with. We were, we were looking at homes um, a while ago. I ended up ending that search. But during that search, a realtor that a listing agent uh, showed us a house on the National Register and told us that we could tear it down. I just kept my mouth shut knowing better, but <laughs> I just found that to be... That's one of the kinds of problems that yeah. used to... And this, she probably also didn't show you this document, right? No. And it, it was a woman, yeah. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't have presumed. Yes. No, I won't say anything. <laughs> well, are we... I guess I would ask the council, are we comfortable approving a resolution adopting the rider subject to some minor modification staff might make I to satisfy that. that. that and I might just suggest um, uh, language something like uh, to gain an understanding of the city's rules and regulations as they pertain to square footage, something. Mm -hmm. Historic preservation. Yeah. Okay. We could yeah. even say if you are planning to make changes yeah. to your home, please this know is especially that city important. staff is, still, is, is willing to, do, you know, we urge you to talk to city staff before you undertake your project. Or but something. specifically, building height, historic yeah. preservation, yeah. scale, because yeah. those are the things that's missing on yeah. that. That's what your point yeah. is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was sort of both. I mean, it was, yeah. it was really to make an extra emphasis for people that are contemplating making significant changes to the property that they really do need to come in ahead of time because they could, you know, they could really benefit from the input. So, well, and it, if, yeah, I mean, calling out the specific areas would be would probably, helpful, too. Really, yeah. Really yeah, if you want, we could, whether you want to approve, approve it tonight, subject to making some changes, and the staff can circulate that to you to make sure we've captured the the uh, feeling of the council this evening. We can do that. that, that that's okay. fine by me, sure. Yeah. I, I would yeah. just suggest that it be stated in such a way as not to preclude us from any changes we might make in the future. So it should say such as or uh, but but not limited to something along that line, just to... Like, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be an attorney reviewing it. Right? There will and make be. sure that all the appropriate uh, right. attorney words will be in there. And I'm assuming you'll put a date on it, right? I was slang for that, but I'm not going to use it. <laughs> I, can I just say, I, 
I, I really like the document, and I'll tell you, part of the reason I do like it is I know we have boards and commissions and our processes aren't always, you know, they don't seem as simple as they might someplace else, but that's, but, but the community's beautiful, and it's because we take such care and we have people who are so diligent on the staff and on the volunteer boards making sure of that. So this, what this says to me, when you look through here and you see all these, you know, the guidelines and the plans that we use, that's why the community is so desirable to live in. So it seems mm -hmm. to me that it's, we're kind of spelling it out. If you want to be part of this place, you know, we, we you don't just come and do whatever you want. We do have, and, and the rest of us have abided by those, and, and, and you would have to, too. But we say it in a nice way. You say welcome exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. That's good. <laughs> well, a big part of the reason that people are so interested in being here is because of that's this point. kind of yeah, thing. Exactly. So exactly, because if, we take this stuff yeah, seriously. Exactly. So, you know, I don't think it's a, t I don't, you know, I think we can be proud of that, but I think we can be, I think we can have very deliberate processes and be welcoming. I don't think those are in any way mutually exclusive. And I think your offer to meet with people before they get going on spending a lot of money with architects is, is, is terrific. Yeah. Let's let them know that's available. It's great. So shall we, all right, move forward with that? Okay, how about if we, uh, I'm looking for a motion to approve a resolution adopting an updated real estate rider and encouraging distribution to home buyers and potential home buyers, subject to comments made to staff the seating by council. So moved. Do second. I have a second. Roll call, please. Alderman Waldo. Aye. Alderman Beidler. Aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Pandeleon. Aye. Alderman Moreno. Aye. Five yay, zero nay. Motion carries. Thank you, Betty, very much. Item number eight, additional items for council discussion. Anything this evening? from staff if not i'll look a motion look for a motion to adjourn so moved have a second second all those in favor aye. 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 uh hearing none we are opposed we are we are adjourned how about that <laughs> that too good evening i'm opposed to continuing we're opposed <laughs> have a good evening